Our next Toastmaster loves to read about writing. He loves writing and he loves exercising and new experiences. He joined Toastmasters to get rid of the stage jitters with a speech entitled, I am a lizard sometimes. Please help me welcome Jose Torres. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, and good, e good evening, fellow Toastmasters. I was supposed to give a speech about happiness today. As unhappy as I looked, that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> but then I looked at my manual and I realized that I had to include visuals for this speech. And I can talk about happiness, but I can't include visuals in a speech about happiness naturally. So, I couldn't, after not being able to think of a of an appropriate visual. I gave it up, I forgot about it, and I said, I'll think about it later. So I picked up the struggle a few days later, and I still couldn't think of anything. So I looked for books, for resources, maybe I could find pictures or be inspired. And I, that was my next problem. I found too many resources. <laughs> I wouldn't have enough time to, to look through them all and include them in a speech naturally. So I forgot about it again, but I didn't forget about it again because time was ticking, I, I felt the walls closing in. And I started talking to myself. I started telling myself, well, why did you sign up for this speech anyway? <laughs> Maybe I could... Uh, ask somebody to exchange roles with me. <laughs> or maybe I could say that I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought the real problem was I'm just not creative enough. So in other words, I was thrashing about. That was my problem. Instead of creating a speech calmly and methodically and just starting, I was thrashing about. I thrashed about so much that I decided to make that the topic of my speech, thrashing about. And what I mean by thrashing about is operating through the lizard brain. I'm going to talk about three things. Why I didn't believe in the lizard brain at first, what the lizard brain is, and how you can quiet your own lizard brain. For a long time, I didn't make any effort to understand the lizard brain. Uh, when I was in college, I remember, well, I started learning about how politicians and businessmen, and people in general don't always have your interest in mind. And I took it to an extreme, and I started listening to conspiracy theorists. And I had a favorite conspiracy theorist, called he was a Briti uh, British guy called David Icke, I don't hear from him uh, anymore, but everything he said made sense to me. <laughs> Until he started talking about how the world is ruled by lizards from outer space. <laughs> so after that, I threw out all of his books and, and I didn't want to hear about him again. Does anybody in here like The Doors? The psychedelic band from the 60s and 70s? I, I really like them. I still like them. And you might remember there, that he has a song, Jim Morrison or The Doors, they have a song called When the Music's Over, Turn Off the Lights. And at the end of the song, uh, everything comes crashing down in this wonderful chaos of, of sound. And then he ends it with, uh, I am the Lizard King. I can do anything. And I thought that was a silly way to end the song. I, I didn't know why he chose a lizard. Why not something more, <laughs> more, uh, uh, fan, something more, like it, that inspired more respect, like a lion or a bear. <laughs> hippopotamus or something, but why, why a lizard? And he talks about the lizard in his poetry and in other songs. So whenever I read about the lizard in books, on, uh, like psychology or science books, I didn't try to understand it. But the lizard brain does exist, people, and in case you didn't know, maybe I'm the only one that didn't know. But you could Google it, and you'll find information about it. Our brain has three parts, and this is where my visuals come in. <laughs> oh. 
This is your brain. <laughs> this is this is your brain on drugs. I just remembered that. <laughs> okay, I, I'm I'm not good at science and uh, scientific terms. They intimidate me, so I'm just going to label these parts one, two, and three. This is uh, parts two and three. These are responsible for all the good things about us, like connecting and creativity and generosity. But all of us have this part too at the base of our, at the stem of our head. <laughs> this is the reptilian brain. What's the reptilian brain? The reptilian brain is hungry. It is scared. It is selfish. It is horny. When you see a squirrel scampering about in the park, it's thinking, how am I going to survive? How am I going to have kids? Get me the heck out of here. <laughs> and we have this same lizard brain. Uh, we have this, the same lizard brain as a squirrel. So when I was struggling to think of a, of a good speech with visuals, I was letting the lizard brain control me. And you experience it too whenever you feel nervous about coming up here for table topics or to give a speech. Well, maybe it's just me, but you might feel a little nervous. That's your, your lizard brain. So how do you conquer your lizard brain? It's simple. You just have to acknowledge it. So similar to meditation, let's say you're angry if you meditate. Uh, you know that you're supposed to acknowledge the feeling, and by acknowledging it, not by resisting it, you, it doesn't have that hold on you. So it's similar to the lizard brain. You just acknowledge it. When we have important work to do, we hear the lizard brain, and we recognize that it's there, and we just have to begin working. We acknowledge the lizard, so we can ignore it. Mr. Toastmaster. That explains a lot. Mm -hmm.